Our final um, talk for uh, this morning is improving the design and usability of electronic health records and clinical decision support for clinicians, patients, and families um, by Mary Sesto from the University of Wisconsin. And Mary is an associate professor in the Department of Medicine and um, in the physical therapy program there. But I think one of the things to know about Mary is that um, I'm not sure I understand all these uh, connections, but um, she has appointments in the Department of Biomedical Engineering and Industrial and Systems Engineering uh, at the University of Wisconsin Carbone Cancer Center, uh, and also on the uh, core faculty in the Center for Quality and Productivity Improvement, and a member of their Systems Engineering Initiative for Patient Safety. And one of the things that um, I think has become clear to me in a few areas that I've worked in is that there are people um, who have skills and knowledge in areas outside of what has been traditionally taught uh, in the medical field uh, who have a lot to offer and about how we practice and how we work. And Mary brings all of those um, uh, qualities uh, to her talk. Uh, just one other comment, which was when we were struggling at Penn uh, with some issues um, along these lines, actually the first thing that came to mind in one of my colleagues was called the University of Wisconsin. Um, they're really good at this stuff. So Mary, uh, thanks for being here. Great. Thank you so much. Um, and do I advance them or do you? Why am I not seeing? Oh, I wonder from the last speaker. Sorry. Uh, well, I'll start talking while they're looking at this interface challenge and how I advance my slides. <laughs> so, just here, that's it? Oh, I'm looking on the touch screen. Okay, so mental model and how I expected slides to be advanced here. Um, <laughs> so, okay, so thank you very much. So, um, okay. No. There we go. So I am part of the UW Engineering Oncology Collaboration. I have a picture of Amy Tabarik, um, the medical oncologist, who's my partner with this. We developed this uh, collaboration that's housed within the Wisconsin Institute for Healthcare Systems Engineering a number of years ago to address population health, improving po using systems engineering to improve population health of um, cancer survivors. And so really focusing on how do we design the work system and supporting processes to improve care. And we've moved upstream with that work, so to speak. So today, I'm going to talk about a few areas in the goal of trying to talk about how do we achieve high-performing EHR and CDS systems. So first of all, no one's surprised here by this graph. We've had a tremendous growth with EHRs in our healthcare systems. And when you think about the complexity of the EHR, being introduced into a very complex health system. I don't think, when we think about it that way, it's surprising to us some of the challenges that we're encountering. Okay, this isn't a simple transition. The other thing that was brought up this morning is just how, you know, it, it's how much of a struggle we have with translating new information into clinical practice, with some of the things with the EHR, with things that are available that exist with best practices and that, trying to translate that into clinical practice can be challenging. So in an attempt to address the need for a workforce capacity that has a clinical informatics um, background and training, and there's now board certification in clinical informatics. There's fellowships. Um, vendors will offer vendor training. And here I just pulled some numbers from one of the vendor looking at a physician builder training. Um, they also have clinician builder training. Um, when you look at these numbers, roughly 4,500 have taken the training, approximately half of that are specialists. Of those specialists that have completed the training, you can see where oncology falls, so those that self-identified as being in this specialty as compared to some of the other specialties. So we're building a workforce capacity to look at the, to address some of these challenges as well. Now, please don't try to read the slide. The purpose of this slide is to show how many stakeholders there are with individual goals when we're looking at EHR design implementation. And two of the most critically important straight stakeholders undoubtedly are the clinician and the patient. And they each have respective goals when it comes to EHR. But I want to just make a note that there's times that these groups can have conflicting goals. So with understandably a clinician wanting to block their inbox when not in office, and a patient goal of hoping that the, the EHR can improve patient access. For that patient, improving access may be 
being able to reach someone who understands their care, what's going on after hours or on weekends, which that is in direct conflict to often what a physician clinician goal is who may be providing that care. So the reality with the EHR, the bad and the good, okay, we, as already has been talked before, prior to my talk, um, we're seeing more um, work with the EHR being done in evening hours. Um, clinicians, physicians are spending as much time using the EHR as they are with patient care. Um, there have been some positives, fortunately, um, with quality metrics for across hospitals being improved. Um, there's been some research coming out with that. Some of our work related to care plan delivery, we found that the error rates re were significantly reduced when we were able to use the EHR to leverage, to leverage the EHR for the care plan. Okay, so now finally getting to talking about usability. So it's interesting, my oncology colleagues, when I first talked about usability, they were you know, you, well, it's useful, it's you, 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 they were tossing around all these other words. I'm like, no, usability is a science. Usability engineering, usability science, where we have specific tools and methods to evaluate whether a tool or technology is usable. So it's not someone just looking in and saying, mm, looks good to me. That's not usability. Usability, and I'll talk to you about what it is, is the effectiveness, efficiency, and satisfaction, which with specific users can achieve certain tasks in an environment. Okay, so there's specific principles of usability. So these heuristics that when we go through and we test whether or not software, technology, medical devices are usable, we look for consistency with these principles of usability. For the sake of time, I'm not going to go into these, but we can talk about them if anyone's interested. There's a number of resources out there that outline what this usability process is, what this looks like, as well as how it should be incorporated into improving health IT and patient safety. Okay, so one of the call-outs I'm gonna make through this is that we need to take the this, this science and look at how does this inform design standards for EHRs and how these design standards can be consistently applied. Love this quote, the EHR doesn't function in a, sol in a silo. Okay, it functions as part of the work system. So although many mistakenly believe that usability is simply determined by the design of the visual display or the interface, a rigorous user-centered design process is based on a deep understanding of how frontline clinicians conduct their cognitive and task-oriented work and how do we use this information to um, improve the design of the product. So when we are talking about usability and when I'm tasked with doing usability testing, I need to thoroughly understand how this tool, this technology, which the EHR is, it's a tool, is going to be used in the clinical setting. So I have to understand the real world complexity of that. And so one of the models that was developed at the University of Wisconsin by Pascal Carrion is used across multiple um, institutions and researchers and that um, is this model of uh, the SEEPS, which is a systems engineering initiative for patient safety. Um, it's a framework that helps us um, envision the work system. And we think about how persons or individuals within the work system, and this includes the patient, because the patient has a significant amount of work to do. Their workload is extremely high, especially in chronic illnesses and cancer. Um, how, the per, how the person, what tasks do they need to complete to achieve whatever are the desired outcomes? What are the technology and tools that they use? Are those tools supporting their work or do they serve as barriers to the work? Um, what environments are they using, to, uh, sorry, what environments are they completing this work in? Is it the home environment? Is it the clinic environment? So with some of the EHR vendors, they stress, you know, look at your, when you look at the EHR, when you're doing your work, make sure you're on a widescreen computer. Well, when you look at the numbers, how many physicians, clinicians, who are doing work in the evening hours? Okay, what, 11-inch laptop monitors? Or 11-inch laptop screens? That's what you're doing the work on. So the environment in which they're doing the work, that technology does not necessarily support it. Um, and then organization. We've talked about interoperability challenges. Within organizations, though, I see challenges with how we use this technology to communicate across um, or within the organization where this message is sent or this information is put in the chart, but as I'm doing my observations, I'm still walk watching someone in the care team calling the other clinician saying, okay, I sent this to you, but you need to be aware of it. So there's interoperability challenges as well. So how, oops, Wrong button. 
Okay, so what I want to do is use a little vignette. Okay, so it's easy for me to go down to oncology and say, okay, guys, I'm doing a talk on EHR usability. What's your current concern right now? And of course, as you can imagine, I get a lot of examples. Um, so this is, uh, I caught one of the oncologists I work with um, when she was entering some scheduling information for a patient, okay? So the task is, she's trying to get this information so the patient can be scheduled for chemo labs and pharmacy, and the text field that she's entering into, and this is a mock-up, um, is you know one of those fixed text size boxes. And so as you enter information into the field, you don't get to see all that you've entered. You have to scroll up and down. Very upsetting for her that day. Um, and it wasn't, and I'm not minimizing this. This is, was a tremendous issue for the team. So small text field, unable to see the text, okay? We finally found a method on how to enlarge it, but it wasn't consistent with the typical method for enlarging. Okay, so there's a lack in consistency here. But what happens, even if you enlarged it, so you said, okay, you know, it's an interface issue. I'm just going to, you know, have this box easily enlarged and make it consistent. The problem was it resulted in the pages that she needed to get information from being inactive. Okay, so she couldn't jump back and forth to the different pages that she needed to catch the information from. The reason she was doing this and where I see oncology being very unique is that, you know, the patients are coming in a lot. They're coming in for a lot of treatments. They want to be able to plan their life around this. Around not, they, they need to plan their life around their treatments. They may not want to, but how can they schedule this with work and other responsibilities, childcare, et cetera? So it wasn't, I want to know when I'm coming in for chemo in two or three weeks. I need to know what my schedule looks like over the next couple of months so I can plan. And so she was doing this pri primarily for patients under care so they could, they could get this information into the schedule and they could block these times so the patient knew when they could come in. It was also supporting the scheduler, the MA and RN, because without her doing this, the scheduler was having to flip through pages and they were finding that there were a number of errors being made. So there was a patient safety concern. Um, and also there was a tremendous amount of effort being expended by the, the physician, the MA and the RN in trying to make sure that this information was accurate. So she just took it on, we're gonna, she's gonna enter all this information to this text field. From a heuristic standpoint, there are a number of violations. Okay, so if I look at it from just a strict heuristics, but when I started to look at the work system, it's like, well, okay, the technology didn't support this, what ended up to be a very complex team-based task. And we've talked about the importance of teams. There are communication ch challenges between individuals, the patient, the care team, and the scheduler. Um, multiple environments had to be organized in this, as well as reporting challenges within the organization. This was a problem, but trying to get the information to the right folks to try to address it was a, what's challenging. So the outcomes, even with the workaround, is there were still scheduling errors, there were still patient complaints, substantial workload being shifted to the physician as well as other members of the care team on checking, rechecking these schedules, and it was an inefficient work process. Okay, so another hopefully take home message, recommendation is we need to not only look at the complexity in the task, but we have to figure out a way to disseminate information on these, what I as an engineer would call a near miss, Okay, and unattended harms. I can't believe this physician was the only one having this scheduling challenge. Okay, so let's look a little bit in some research that's come out and looking at applying some of the science. So in the upper figure, this is looking at, um, and this came out in 2015, so these numbers are a little dated, but looking at the number of vendors that reported, and there were 41 vendors that reported some type of a usability process, that they use usability, um, and I don't think I have a, do I have a pointer on this? Is that, I'm afraid to touch anything. That, no? Oops, nope. Okay. Ah, there we go. Okay, so the, the green button. No, oh, no, that's cool. It's fine. Um, so anyhow, this is, a third of them did not report um, a usability process. Of those that reported, this bottom graph here, um, this shows the dark bars are clinicians or clini clinical background, light bars are um, no clinical background. So there's a recommendation at least from a usability perspective, at least 15 participants with clinical backgrounds should be evaluating the EHR. And so when we look at this, um, two thirds use less than 15 participants with clinical backgrounds. So the point of this slide is basically usability evaluation processes exist, but they're being applied variably. And so in this graph, 
So this is looking at some EHR use in the real world. And so four different healthcare systems, um, two vendors, um, Cerner and Epic. I don't know, we, they, we don't know which colors are who, you know, so, but the purple bars are two sites using one vendor. The brown bars are two sites using another vendor. What I want to bring your attention to, and this is sort of a busy graph, and I'm just, doggone it, I'm just looking at now the number of clicks by site for six different tasks down here. Um, so ordering imaging, uh, medication, and scheduling labs. Uh, there's a, a lot of variability that's occurring. So not only between vendors and across systems, but even within systems. And so some of the results from this article that they talked about is really highlighting the need for implementation optimization, as well as, importantly, when EHRs are implemented into organizations, there's customization that occurs. And so because you've done the usability testing at the vendor level, when you implement it, do you, do you risk losing some of that usability? Are changes made that compromise the usability of the EHR? So importantly, to develop standard usability and safety measures that are applied consistently. Um, this one, uh, this figure I wanted to show, looks at, well, what you guys, I've heard, note bloat. So how large the notes, the clinical notes are in the US. So US are the light colored bars. Okay, international notes, okay, dark colored bars. And so the quote from the article talking about this note blow is the highly trained US physician, and I would argue other clinicians as well, however, has become a data entry clerk required to document not only diagnosis, phys physician orders, and patient visit notes, but also an increasing amount of, of increasing amount of low value administrative data. And this aligns with the recent recommendations from AMIA to the Department of Health and Human Services that we need to figure out how to decouple some of the requirements um, of documentation, regulatory, um, your administrative compliance from your clinical documentation as what's been mentioned by other speakers. Um, so again, addressing documentation requirements affecting usability and workload, in my opinion, is a critical place that we need to look. Moving forward, um, so the, this slide and the next slide are sort of my summary slides in that we have information out there. So a, the American Medical Association has partnered with MedStar Health National Center for Human Factors. So this is the group that I showed a lot of their data. Um, and how do we, pro providing guidance and information on EHR safety and usability. So this is a tremendous resource and they're bringing a lot of the key players to the table. So I think as we move forward and we talk about this, we think about leveraging what exists. Um, and finally, recommendations on a decade of HIT usability challenges and the path forward. These align with the call outs that I had listed in my slides. So um, I wanted to get these up there in the hopes of this would be part of the conversation as we move forward. And importantly, no one stakeholder can do this alone. These challenges demand a multi-level approach. So I like to thank my tremendous um, group of colleagues um, and for the slides, for those who are interested, I do have some, a bunch of references if anyone is interested in that um, with looking more at the work system approach. So thank you.